Well, can you imagine coming to a brand new country with a love and passion for dance? And well, fast forward now to 2016, and I have the lovely and beautiful Anna Karen Lopez, who once had the dream of being a ballerina, and now you are a salsa champion, so to speak, with your own dance company. So first of all, congratulations, Anna, but let's talk about your story. It, it really is truly all about dance, right? Yes. So I moved here when I was seven and I started doing ballet. So I started just taking ballet classes, you know, once a week. And then I moved to like, you know, a, a competitive program. So then it was like twice, three, four times a week. And then it moved along and I joined the professional division at the Rowan Pick Ballet. So it was a full-time dancing. And then um, I did that for a few years and then I felt like I wanted to go back to the competition world. So I came back, I did a few competition, I attended the Youth American Grand Prix, mm -hmm. which I wanted that competition to be my closure in the ballet world. So I went ahead and we went to Chicago, which I placed sixth out of like, you know, like a hundreds of ballerinas. Hundreds, yes. It was crazy and I was so happy I did it. And then I moved along and I went uh, and trained in salsa. Oh my goodness. And then now you opened up the very first Latin dance school right here in Winnipeg with your dad. Yes, that's right. So he actually founded the school like 15 years ago. I remember I had to go sit and watch the class when I was little. So I just learned by watching. And one day um, there was a girl missing and I said, well, I can fill in. And they're like, no, you can't. And then I went ahead and I knew the basic from all the, you know, yeah. all the hours watching. And then ever since, like I knew how to dance salsa, but I never really explored it just because I was stuck in the ballet for so long. So now, yeah, I'm, I'm investing more time in the company, making it grow. I open a kids program. Yes, so, and that is so exciting. The company is called uh, Dance Explosion, Salsa Dance Explosion. Salsa Explosion. And now with the kids, you're incorporating your ballet with their That's salsa right. technique. So I've been, like, after I finished competing, I actually taught ballet for four years. Mm -hmm. So, and then I went to the American Ballet Theater for my teacher certificate which I'll be going back again. And um, so it was amazing because it's really hard to teach kids, right? Especially salsa, it's actually of eight, you know, count step. You can't teach a three-year-old eight feet. <laughs> you just can't. Yeah. So um, I basically, I'm mixing all the ballet mm -hmm. that was taught to me and I'm incorporating it in the salsa, especially now because I know that salsa is not just the salsa step. There's a lot of technique behind it, like ballroom training, ballet, ta like everything. Right. So I'm trying to mix it all and hopefully. So, yeah. What is the age range in the company? I have from three <laughs> to like the oldest. And we won't say. No. We won't say. <laughs> but I think that is truly the beauty of this dance too, as well as it, it covers all ages. That's right. Yeah. I mean, there was no salsa kids in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. So it just hit me one time that I'm like, well, if you want it to keep growing, we need to start the, you know, the younger kids involved. So I went ahead and I chose four students and I just threw a dance together and now we have like a full like 35 kids in our classroom now. Wow. And for yourself too, now you've fulfilled that passion yes. for salsa. You compete and you have a partner, but he is miles and miles away from you. He is, yeah. So it must be really hard or intense training when you go to prepare for competitions. Yeah, it is really hard. Um, it wasn't the first year that we competed. I competed as an amateur, so it was a pro-am category. And then the following year, I went right ahead into the pro category. So um, it was a big step, and I, it was kind of scary knowing that we don't have a year to train. We don't have, you know, Monday to Saturday to be, like, waking up, you know, for a full year. Like, I don't have that. We have very limited amount of time together, but I think I never made that a, like a barrier in my mind. Like I just we made it work, and but yeah, like every day has to be a hundred percent. Doesn't matter if you're feeling sick, if you're tired, if you just have to give it because you don't have that much time. Oh well, congratulations on the school, yeah. and you do have special Sundays I hear at the fork, so all the public is welcome to yes. attend. So what are, the, what are those? It's basically the Salsa Sundays, and it's every Sunday of July. It'll be happening at the Forks under the canopy, and there's basically live bands, shows, music. It's great. I mean, we have so many people coming out, and it's such a great time. Like summertime, you get to dance outside. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Okay, well, once again, thank you so much. Thank Anna you. Karen Lopez, Salsa Explosion. Don't go away, because coming up, 
a little dance demo. Welcome back. Well, it is a little dance demo with the Salsa Queen herself, Anna Karen Lopez from Salsa Explosion. Please take it easy on me. <laughs> she is a world champion, so okay. Here, Here we go. go, nice All and right. easy. So we're going to start forward with our left foot on the one. So we're going forward on one. You're going one, two together, okay. and back on the five with the right foot. Five, six, seven. And there you go. So back again, forward again. One, two, three and a five, six, seven. So I'm not counting the four and the eight just because right. they're quiet so, and we're just standing there. So okay. there's no need to count that one. So here we go. Okay. We're gonna try it again, all the counts. So we're going forward. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. You have Whoa. it. It's pretty easy. It's easy peasy, I'm telling you. Now we're gonna add a little bit of a touch. So we're gonna move our arms side to side. Right. And it's going to add a little bit of an upper body movement, you see? Okay. So here we go. Let's try it with our arms and feet together. And one, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six. Whoa. You look great. I could get used to two, this. Three, look, this is easy, five, folks. Six, get seven. up. Try it. And a five, six, seven. Three. Oh, thank you so thank much, you. Anna. It was so much fun. Salsa, anybody can do it. Absolutely. Oh, wow. All the best with your company. Thank you. Salsa Explosion. Go out to the Forks every Sunday under the canopy, and you can do this too. Don't go away because I'm going to return with the master, Nario, and see what he has made for his final creation. Well, I'm a little exhausted from doing that salsa dancing, but you know what? Nario. The masterpiece is finished. Are you happy with it? Yes, I'm happy with it. I think it's incredible. Nerio has been spending this whole show doing a fantastic piece here in the loft. So let's go over here. Let's talk about your inspiration. What was it here for this piece? The room, the clothing in the space from Bella Bella. So I, I like to move with nature. and I'm inspired by all the things that are around me. So I wanted to create something that would resonate with this space. And, um, well, it's beautiful. The heart on the face. It's more on the head. It's, the head. For me, it's a symbol of thinking with the heart. Oh, Ooh. that's so beautiful. And then there's Bella there, too. So uh, before we wrap up, we want to talk about some special events that are, be ha that are happening here in Winnipeg. And it really embodies and excites the whole artistic community here. So. T Let's talk about yeah. those, yeah. So once a month, oh sorry, twice a month. Yeah. Um, second week and third week of every month mm -hmm. for the next, for the whole summer, mm -hmm. we're going to be doing some events at the Metropolitan Rooftop and we're going to draw together different community circles um, from the fashion community to um, hairstylists, dancers, poets, singers. Wow. And you've already, yeah, you've had one or two already, and so what is sort of the reaction from Winnipeggers here? Um, I've heard nothing but great things. Um, people love the, the Threads event that we had last mm -hmm. month, the Graffiti Gallery, and uh, yeah, just seeing it's so growing. many different walks of life come in that, through that door and share the space with one another, it was, it was amazing. So that, that's what uh, a lot of them have said they've been asking for. Wow. Something of this magnitude. So I have a question for you, Nerio. You've been doing this for so many years now. What has art given you? And I guess what have you given to art back? Um, it's given me a sense of who I am. Um, definitely has allowed me the opportunity to, to grow and, and learn more about myself. And now I'm in a position where I have been able to share uh, my art, but not just technique, you know, and what art offers is um, a sense of self-identity and the opportunity to explore oneself, and I feel that, especially with the young people that I work with, that it's it's really important to, to discover who you are and discover your capabilities and, and learn about basic human skills, like having self-confidence. Um, my, my latest push has been how art can be used to heal communities and through storytelling, through spoken word, creative writing, and I have this 
big goal to create a healing center um, that uses arts for that sole wow. purpose. But I'm working on it. And we will get that place for you. Oh my goodness. Big <laughs> hug. Ooh, thank you so much, my special guest here, Nerio. And I also want to give a big shout out and thank you to Anna Karen Lopez. Now we'll leave you with a little bit of what's to come on the next episode of Backstage 360. Ha, <laughs>